Hi guys, welcome to my 38th week pregnancy vlog. Yay, I can't believe um, another week has passed and technically today I'm 39 weeks, one week from my estimated due date. Yay, I hope, you know, I hope this week goes by fast, but I have a feeling it's going to be a long one. Um, anyways, we're here to talk about 38 weeks, not 39. Um, 38 weeks has been a pretty low-key week, and again, kind of like 37. Pretty low-key, not a whole lot of symptoms, um, pretty basic doctor's appointment that I went to on Thursday. Symptoms this week have been pretty much the same as, as they've been, um, ongoing with the, um, loose bowel movements or PMs, and, um, that's pretty constant, and I thought that maybe... Um, that was a sign labor is near, but I guess it kind of is, but it's been going on for about a month-ish now, so, you know, I think it's just towards the end, you just run out of space, maybe, I don't know what the deal is, but kind of annoying, but it's better than being constipated, I'll take it. <laughs> um, back pain, still there, uncomfortable getting to sleep, and insomnia, yep, still there. Sometimes I just like get up and I'm like, oh, can it just be morning? Like, I know I'm tired of getting up and waking up and be like, oh, I think it's morning. And nope, it's not. There's still, you know, I mean, I like to sleep. It's not that I don't want to sleep. It's just it's such a pain when you wake up and you think, oh, it's time to get up and it's not. And, um, you know, you're kind of wide awake. I don't like that feeling. Um, and then it, it, I do go back to sleep, but it does take me a little bit longer now to go back to sleep. And I'm pretty sure this is just going to stay this way now, um, till beyond babies, you know. I think just I'm becoming a mother sleeper now. I don't know. Um, yeah, besides those things, um, I have noticed, like, increased soreness in the joints that connect between my leg and my pelvis. Um, again, I mentioned that kind of, like, riding a horse type of achy feeling that has gotten kind of a little bit worse, nothing too unbearable, but, uh, it's definitely hard to put on pants and underwear now it's like I feel like almost want to <laughs> sit down I feel like an old lady um it's just like sore to like you know move my legs in that way which um I think it's just normal normal aches and pains um besides that my biggest thing that I've encountered I think over the week last week or so is I have gotten mad stretch marks before I think in the beginning of my um, third trimester, maybe end of my second trimester. I didn't really have a lot. I had like two, I think, and now it has just grown like vines. <laughs> um, you know, it's not too bad. I've seen worse and, you know, it's still below like my belly button line, but there's definitely a lot there now. I had some pre, um, pregnancy stretch marks from when I went through puberty that are now faded and I know these will fade and it's just kind of the nature of being pregnant your belly is being stretched out and your skin is going to stretch out and therefore you have stretch marks and I also have fair skin which is more prone to stretch marks um sorry I feel like I have to sneeze I hope I hope I don't sneeze <laughs> um yeah I've been um sick so please bear with me with sniffles and sneezing and any other weirdness um I have just gotten sick yesterday um and I'm trying to fight it off so I'm drinking lots of emergency um which is supposed to be safe and good for you and I'm also you know just trying to rest um yeah so I hope it just goes away before baby's here I don't want to deal with this <laughs> and newborn baby and get him sick which I don't know how that works I think I want to say like when you're breastfeeding you can't transmit colds through breast milk I don't know I need to read up more on that clearly um, but I have not had time I've been doing lots of homework I've been trying to get stuff done that is due the end of April and I know I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time um, when uh, Amir is here so I've been trying to get stuff done but I've been very unmotivated um, I've been very unmotivated to do schoolwork so I'm trying to kind of force myself to get through that anyways sorry back to stretch marks what I've been using now because I'm out of my Bur Burt's Bees cream I was gonna buy more I just decided ah it's the end whatever I already got my stretch marks um, I've been using coconut oil. I use that as a facial moisturizer, and I figured why not use it um, under or for my belly as well. Um, so that seems to be moisturizing well. I love how it smells. It's supposed to have a lot of great properties to it that's good for your skin, and I probably will be using that on baby as well as a moisturizer eventually. 
um, depending on how he reacts to it. Just give, forgive the sun, it's like, um, finally a little bit sunny out and it kind of like is getting, going from cloudy to sunny, so it's kind of weird lighting. Um, yeah, so, stretch marks, whatever, I kind of knew I would get them, but, um, uh, not too bad, really. I can, I can handle that. Um, yeah, I think that's really it. As far as symptoms, baby's still moving quite a bit. He's putting a lot of pressure. Oh, um, I have still had some, like, menstrual type cramping, but nothing really too exciting. No big contractions, unfortunately. <laughs> I know our baby, you know, he's not due for another week. And, or, you know, from 38 weeks, so it would be two weeks. Um, but... You know, I'm ready for him. We're ready for him whenever he wants to come out and when he's ready to come. Um, you know, I, I can wait. However, we are very anxious to meet him. Uh, of course, you know, I think this is like the hardest part is like waiting and you just don't know. It's like you just don't know when, you don't know where, you don't know how. And, you know, you don't know what your first symptom is going to be, if water breaks or it's going to just start off with contractions or who knows. Um... I had my appointment on Thursday, and my doctor said that the baby was still kind of high. Um, you know, he was a little bit lower, but he's still pretty high up there. And I didn't have any change with my short cervical check, no dilation. Um, still soft, but no dilation. So she's like, I don't think you're going to have baby this week. She's like, but you never know. So, you know, I kind of was like a little discouraged. I wished for a little progress, even just like, you know, half a centimeter, but that's okay. Um, it'll happen when it's time to happen, hopefully, um, and I don't have to, you know, worry about, you know, induction or anything like that and for a while. Um, so I was talking to my friend, I'm like, baby could be here till tax day <laughs> um, if they let you go to till 42 weeks, and I think that they consider inducing at 41, but I don't know how I feel about that. We'll see. We'll see as time goes. I will keep you updated, but um, I'd rather not. Definitely rather not. So I've been kind of trying to do lots of like self-induction techniques. Not that I expected baby to come right away, but you know, just things to kind of help moving things along. I'm trying to walk, pineapple, um, you know, everything else that they recommend. Um, I think you know <laughs> things like that. Um, also. There's this really weird technique that I heard about on Baby Center, and it's like you, they call it the coffee potty, where you sit on the toilet with um, <laughs> a pot of hot coffee grounds and you steam for like 20 minutes, and it's supposedly it's supposed to work, and a lot of girls on the birth center, or women, say that it works. <laughs> I'm not going to try that. I think that sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> Maybe if I'm overdue and they're about to induce me, I will try whatever I can. Things get desperate, <laughs> but I think that's just kind of silly. And, you know, it seems kind of painful, like steam up there. I don't know. And I just thought I'd tell you about that because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> it's an odd technique that I'd never heard of before. And if you, I even Google like natural inductions and induction techniques. And I've never heard of that until I went to the baby center um, birth like forums. <laughs> so it's pretty interesting. <laughs> All the little wives tales and techniques that there are out there to induce yourself. Um, also, there's like evening primrose. Um, I am not doing that, but I have, I should have brought it, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare. I am drinking a new tea, a pregnancy tea, um, it is called the Pregnancy Tea by Traditional Medicine, Medicine Traditions, one of those names, um, you can get it at like a health food store, um, we, I got it at my local one, and it's got red raspberry leaf, which is not supposed to induce labor, but it is supposed to help soften your cervix, and also strengthen your <laughs> strengthen your uterus so that your contractions are stronger and more effective. So you think, why would you want stronger um, contractions? But you do, because apparently, you know, that's how you get baby to come out. <laughs> so um, it's supposed to be really good, and I read online, like, a lot of midwives even, like, recommend it throughout the pregnancy in smaller amounts. But now I'm trying to drink about two to three cups of tea a day, um, like mugs. So I don't know how much water is in there. Probably more than eight ounces. I can say that. Um, so I've been drinking that. And it's actually really tasty. I don't put sugar or honey or any of that in there. And it tastes really delicious. It's got other things like alfalfa. 
um, I really should have brought that. I'm sorry, I'll try to bring it next time. If I'm still here and still pregnant, I will um, try to bring that out oh, next time. I'm sorry I didn't prepare, but I'm trying to get this video um, done before I have something to do tonight. So, otherwise I would start over. Um, but it's not in a convenient place for me to grab it. But if you Google, like, the Pregnancy Tea by Medicine Traditions, um, that is the tea that I've been drinking, and it's supposed to be really good for you. Um... So I've been drinking that, an emergency, and hopefully I can knock this cold out before he comes. Because um, I really do not want to deal with this. I'm sure you know it's so hard to breathe when you're pregnant, you're out of breath constantly, you're already uncomfortable <laughs> laying down, and you're dealing with a plugged up nose and congestion and soreness and body aches. It's no fun. Um, but I'm not here to rant or whatever, but I just hope it goes away soon. Um, I did post a video this week for my, um, little nursery, um, tour, or, like, co-sharing tour, and, you know, I don't have everything in place how I wanted it exactly, but I wanted to get it out before I knew, you know, I would have time, when I knew I would have time, even though it's not perfect and exactly how I want it. So if you are interested, please watch that on my channel. Um, and I also have another question. Anybody that has experience with this, I'm a little bit worried about our cat. <laughs> His behavior lately has just been kind of more naughty than usual. He's kind of a rambunctious and a little bit of a naughty kitty. He is. But lately, he has just been ugh, driving me up the wall. He has just been meowing and scratching. Not me, really, but, you know, he's just been scratching at everything. And I feel like he's, like, really kind of asking for attention. And I'm trying to give him some. And maybe he knows labor is coming. I don't know. But I'm worried about his behavior when the baby's here because I don't want him acting out against the baby. And of course, I will be monitoring the baby. He will not be sleeping in our room. Um, the baby will, of course, <laughs> but the cat will not. And he's going to have a fit because he loves sleeping, um, at least in the same room with us, sometimes with us, sometimes not. And he's also been jumping up on the crib, and I not having that. Um, so if anybody has any techniques... Um, how to deal with a cat or an animal, um, and introducing your baby. I have heard that a lot of times cats, they don't really have interest in newborns, and they're just kind of like, what is that loud, annoying, crying thing? I don't want to be near it. So I'm kind of hoping for that. As much as I love our kitty and I want him to be around, you know, obviously our baby's going to come first, and I want to make sure that, you know, we're protecting him and making sure that he is, the cat is not acting out against the baby fine, you can yell, meow, and do whatever with me, but I don't want him doing that to the baby, and I do not want him in his crib, and, you know, so, if anybody has any ideas on that, please, please let me know, I'm desperate for that, um, so I'll go ahead quickly and show you my belly, and I think that's it for this week. <clears throat> I'm gonna move the stool here, oh. So this is the 39 week exact belly. And this is where like my stretch marks are all kind of like right here. I would show you, but it's really ugly. <laughs> really ugly. I don't think you need to see it. Um, unless somebody really has strong desire, let me know, but it's pretty ugly. and. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary to show. I think a lot of women do get stretch marks, and they know what they look like. So, yeah, that's it for 38 weeks, and maybe I'll be seeing you next week. Um, excuse me. Still for my 39th week pregnancy vlog, and maybe you'll see me for our first pregnant or our first vlog with baby. So we'll see. Thank you.